In this video, we review Azure Private Subnets and why they're important. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. As part of an effort to make Azure secure by default, default outbound internet access will be disabled on new deployments starting September 30th, 2025. Private subnets now generally available in Azure will help organizations transition to explicit internet access. Coming up, we review private subnets and the simplest way to enable internet access on new and existing virtual networks. Before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Also, check out my courses on Windows 365 with Intune Management, Azure Virtual Desktop, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID. Links are below. And a big thanks to channel members. Your support is appreciated. Back to it, Azure private subnets recently became generally available. Devices connected to a private subnet don't have internet access by default. They can only access the internet if an explicit method has been defined. To understand this change, let's review how internet access currently works for VMs in Azure. A VM gets internet access by default even if an explicit path to the internet has not been defined. How they get to the internet depends on the virtual network and VM configuration. An evaluation begins by checking for a network route defined to a network virtual appliance or firewall using a user-defined route, for example. This could be to an Azure firewall or a network virtual appliance provided by another vendor. Next, if an Azure NAT gateway is attached to the subnet, that's used. After that, if the VM has a public IP address, that's used to access the internet. Next, if the VM is part of a standard public load balancer with an outbound rule configured, the load balancer's public IP is used. The NAT gateway, NIC public IP, and load balancer with an outbound rule utilizes explicit source network address translation, or SNAT, for internet access. Microsoft recommends an explicit method for accessing the internet, one that we define and control. After that, if there are load balancing rules with the disable outbound SNAT rule set to false, that's used. If none of those conditions match, the VM gets implicit outbound connectivity from a public Microsoft IP, even if we haven't configured internet access. This is default outbound access, and that could be an issue if we don't want the VM to have internet access. Also, the IP address is not static and could change. It's not part of the Azure subscriptions and may make troubleshooting difficult. Default outbound access will no longer be available at the end of September 2025. After that, any new virtual network will no longer have internet access unless we as administrators explicitly defined outbound internet access. Existing VMs, however, will continue to use default outbound access. This change will not impact existing deployments. Before that happens, we can use private subnets to enforce explicit internet access. VMs attached to a private subnet don't have the default outbound option for internet access. We can use private subnets on new subnets or convert existing subnets to private subnets. That allows us to limit outbound access on new subnets and transition existing subnets to explicit internet access before default outbound access is no longer available. We can create a new private subnet by selecting the private subnet option when adding a subnet. We can convert an existing subnet to a private subnet by navigating to the subnet's properties and selecting the private subnet option. After September of 2025, all new virtual networks will default to private subnets and will require one of the previously outlined options if attached VMs need internet access. The easiest option is a NAT gateway. Let's create a NAT gateway next. Here we are in the Azure portal at virtual networks. We can create a NAT gateway when we deploy a new virtual network or create one and add it to a virtual network. If we add a virtual network, Configure the subscription, resource group, name, and region. Update security and then go to IP addresses. From here, we'll configure a subnet. Let's set this to a private subnet. Under security NAT gateway, we can either select an existing NAT gateway or create a new one. Let's create a new one. Give it a name. NAT GW demo one for this example. We can use one or more single public IP addresses or a prefix. A prefix specifies a range of continuous IP addresses. Each public IP has 64,000 source network address translation or SNAT ports. Use a prefix of public IP addresses or multiple single public IP addresses for large environments that need more SNAT ports. We'll select a public IP address and add a new one. 
click OK and save. If we add additional subnets at this point, we'll make the subnet private. We could add a new VNet gateway. We can't select the one we just configured with the first subnet because that hasn't been created yet. Let's cancel. We'll go to Review and Create and Create. We'll pause here until that finishes. Now if we go to the virtual network and go to Subnets and add a subnet, we can select the NAT gateway that we created with the virtual network. And we can also make this a private subnet. Click Add. That's how we create a new VNet with private subnets and a NAT gateway. But what if we already have VNets and we want to convert them to a private VNet and add a NAT gateway? We can create a new NAT gateway and use it on existing or new subnets by searching for NAT gateway in the Azure portal. Here it shows the NAT gateway we set up in the last example. Let's create a new NAT gateway. Select an existing resource group or create a new one. The NAT gateway is bound to the VNet, so the VNet resource group would be a good option. Or if you'd like, you could create a new one. Give it a name. Select the region. It must be the same region as the VNet with the subnets we're attaching it to. East US 2 in this example. A NAT gateway is a zonal resource, meaning we can specify the availability zone for the deployment. NAT gateways include built-in resiliency. There's another option called No Zone. With No Zone, Microsoft will manage the placement of the NAT gateway. If we select a zone, the gateway will deploy to that zone. We could use this if we wanted to place the NAT gateway and servers on a subnet in the same zone. For example, if subnet 1 had VMs in zone 1, we could attach a VNet gateway that's also in zone 1, and the same for zone 2 and 3, keeping all zonal resources in the same zone. For this example, we'll leave it to No Zone. We can change the TCP idle timeout, if needed, from 4 to 120 minutes. UDP is set to 4 minutes and can't be changed. We'll leave that set as default and go to Outbound IP Next. Each Outbound IP provides 64,000 SNAT ports. We can use one or more single IP addresses or a range of IP addresses with a public IP prefix for environments that need more SNAT ports. We'll go next to Subnets. From here, we could select the VNet and subnets we want to add the NAT gateway to. We'll leave it blank for this example and move to Tags. Add Tags as needed and go to Review and Create. And once validation passes, we'll create. That finished, let's add it to a virtual network next. We'll go to Virtual Networks. Find the existing virtual network we want to add it to, VNet2 for this example. Go to Subnets. Let's view the subnet. We'll make the subnet private. And under Security, we'll select the NAT gateway we just created. Notice NAT gateway demo 1, the one we created in the first example, is not available. That's because it's attached to the other VNet. Let's save. Let's verify that a VM on that subnet is using the NAT gateway's public IP address. Let's go back to NAT gateways. We'll open up the NAT gateway we just created. Go to Settings, Outbound IP, and there it shows our outbound IP ends in 207. Next, let's log into a VM attached to the subnet that's using this NAT gateway. Here it is, and we can see that it's connected to VNet2, the default subnet. That's the one we just attached the NAT gateway to. Let's connect by Azure Bastion. We're using Bastion because this server does not have a public IP address. Log in. Here we are logged in. Let's open up a web browser and go to ipchicken.com. And there it is. The website is showing that we're using the public IP address of the NAT gateway. That's good. That means our outbound connections are no longer using the default outbound connection. They're using the NAT gateway. That is how to create a new NAT gateway make a subnet private, and attach the NAT gateway to the subnet. There are a couple of things to be aware of with a change to default outbound access and private subnets. 
First, a NAT gateway can attach to multiple subnets in one VNet only, but a VNet can have multiple NAT gateways. Multiple NAT gateways on a VNet is not necessary and will add to the cost, but it is possible. Services that require internet access like Windows activation and Windows updates won't function on a VM in a private subnet without explicit internet access. If user-defined routes are used, with the default route set to send traffic to another firewall or network appliance, any traffic that bypasses the route, such as service tag destinations, won't work on a private subnet. Don't use private subnets for delegated or managed subnets that host PaaS services. These services manage outbound connectivity. That is how to use Azure private subnets to disable default outbound access. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.